Today, I'm in the kitchen, not to cook, but because we're here for chemistry lab number one. So today, I'm going to be showing you the difference between a physical and a chemical reaction. Here, we have three objects, ice, we have water, and we have water vapor. So, what's similar between all of them? Well, they're chemical formula. So what makes them have different properties? Like, for example, ice is really cold. Well, they don't really have that many different properties. Let's say I drop this ice into this pretty hot water. And, as you can see, it's immediately going to start melting. It's so hot that you can even see the ice shrinking right now. Put this in here. Let's see what happens. The concept today is that the difference between all of these is caused by temperature. You have ice in its solid form. But when you melt it and put it in high temperatures like this water, you get, of course, water. <clears throat> and water, uh, liquid water, is the form that we usually see water in at room temperature. But sometimes, especially when you're cooking, you're going to see water vapor, which is water in its gas form. And water in its gas form is caused when water goes over 100 degrees Celsius. So, because Celsius is easier to use. I'm not going to use Fahrenheit. So, that means that the difference between all of these is caused by temperature. So, when this ice melts, that's a physical reaction. Phase change, which is what occurs when I melt this ice, especially in my hands, and it's turning to water all over my hands, what happens when I boil water and it turns into gas, that is called a physical change. That is phase change. Now get ready to get the salt and get the water because now we're also going to talk about another kind of physical change. All right, so now let's get to dissolution. This salt will dissolve in water as soon as I put this tablespoon in. So are you ready? Three, two, one. Now, if I mix it up, you can see, even if I pour it everywhere, there seems to be no way to reverse. The, uh, the salt has dissolved in the water. But is this permanent? No, it isn't. Why? Well, distillation is a process where essentially you heat up the water and it evaporates but the salt is caught so you have the water and then you have the salt and they are two separate again so even though these two seem inseparable it can be reversed by distillation even though distillation might be pretty expensive so all physical reactions can be reversed but is that the same with a chemical reaction? Well, let's find out. But first, here's a summary. A physical reaction, for example, a temperature change, means that when I drop something in this water, for example, because of the salt, I can't see anything in it anymore, but there's our piece of ice. When I drop this piece of ice in the water, that means that it's in a higher temperature, so it's going to melt. However, does this change the arrangement of the molecules inside this piece of ice? No, it simply changes how they flow. So for example, in a solid like ice, they are firm, but well, it's, ice is pretty brittle, let's be real. Still, it's pretty hard to like bend, shape, probably because it's not a metal, but once it's in its liquid form, that means that it's easier to shape form because it's in liquid form. So it's going to take the shape of its container and the molecules are more loosely arranged. And in gas form, there's still a little bit of water vapor coming out of there. In gas form, eh, the water is going to boil and become evaporated. 
So it's going to go into its gas form where all the molecules are just loosely flying around with no sort of container. So that means that even though they look like they have different properties on the surface, they all have the chemical formula H2O. No bonds are broken or formed in the molecules of H2O. However, let's get to something that is a chemical reaction. Oh, yeah, and also uh, bonds <clears throat> and also bonds are not broken when salt dissolves into water. Now let's get to the chemical reaction. So, first, let's talk about the five types of chemical reactions before we get to the suspicious setup on the table. So, the first type we'll cover is synthesis. Synthesis is when two molecules come together and form new molecules that are often one bigger molecule. So, it can be more than two reactants, or it can be two. All it has to be it has to be more than one reactant. But there are also reactions where there is only one reactant that breaks down into several products. That is called decomposition. So, now, what about combustion, you might ask? Well, combustion is a type of chemical reaction. It's when reactants containing carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen rearrange to form carbon dioxide and uh, hydrogen, monohydrogen dioxide or dihydrogen monoxide, DHMO, very dangerous, very dangerous. <coughs> they will go combine to form these two compounds after they react. And it's also combustive, of course. Then the single replacement, essentially, and let's say we have A plus B, C. B, C is a compound with B and C elements. So, A has more reactivity than B. You can find that out using table J in the chemistry reference table. And it becomes B plus A, C. So, that can happen oftentimes when something is just begging for valence electron and another element attached is not as uh, doesn't have as much electronegativity, so it comes out with not as much reactivity. Let's figure out what double replacement is. Well, essentially, let's say you have A, B, and C, D. Both compounds A, B, and C, D have to be soluble in water, and you can find that out using table F. So th that they will combine. Usually, they will rearrange to form AC plus BD. However, this only happens if one of or both of the new compounds that will be formed, AC or BD or both, is solu insoluble in water. If they are both soluble in water after the reaction, then no reaction will actually come to occur. So, now that we've talked about all five Let's get to the experiment. So here we have an infamous setup, Coke and Mentos. Now, don't be super scared because this is not a setup for a nuclear bomb. However, it is still on my study desk, so. Into this tube to react. That's five, that's six, I think that might be enough. Seven, that's an eight, that's a nine and the tube is filled, so I can't do anymore. All right. 